Let's be honest, writing a book can feel like an enormous task that sucks your energy no matter how inspired you might be. But even when you've written the whole thing and edited down to a final draft you can be proud of, the work still isn't over. Because if you aren't self-publishing, you're going to have to pitch your book to agents and publishers and make sure you grab their attention. That's why today we're talking about writing a synopsis for your book that makes the professional grade and truly stands out. <laughs> Hi, JC here with Autocrit. So your book is finished, you figured it all out, and your manuscript feels ready to hit the shelves with a beautiful cover on it. Now let's say you sent a query letter off to an agent or publisher and the news is good. They want to see a full synopsis and a few sample chapters of your book. An author creating a book synopsis is a lot like a writer at a marketing firm who's tasked with putting together an advertisement or online landing page. Both kinds of message are usually short, sweet, and designed to catch the reader's interest and encourage them to take action. Where new authors tend to fall down, though, is in knowing their audience. In this video, we'll be talking about a book synopsis in the strictest sense of what it is, a complete, condensed insight into your story. Think of it as a snapshot of your book. It's the trailer you'd watch if your novel were a movie, except the ending is actually revealed. And the big question is, who is the intended audience? The answer, prospective agents and publishers. The reason you really need to understand this audience is that many authors believe they need to leave a cliffhanger or keep the reader in suspense as a general rule. After all, that's what you'll be doing for the people who actually buy your book in stores, right? It's all about keeping them excited and interested. But the truth of writing a professional book synopsis is quite different, because in reality, no one is going to financially back a piece of work when they don't know how it ends. So what goes into the nuts and bolts of a synopsis that's likely to catch the interest of the people on the business side of publishing. Here are a few of our top tips. Step one might surprise you. It's writing the book first. Writing the synopsis before you begin isn't technically writing a synopsis. It's writing a rough draft. Things change as you go through drafting and editing. Characters might decide to do things you didn't expect, and what you thought were going to be explosive plot points turn out to be duds that need to be removed for the sake of the story. For a synopsis that clearly reflects your work and is empowered with enough detailed insight to present an intriguing overview, you really do need to have the completed manuscript ready to go. Few publishers are interested in helping you bring an idea to the market unless you're already signed on a multi-book contract. They're looking for a product they can bring to the market, and the product you offer should be in a shape that allows them to do that quickly and with minimum fuss. Next up is to make sure you follow correct formatting for your synopsis, and you can rarely go wrong with using the standard manuscript format. One thing to remember here is to always keep an eye on the publisher or agent's specific demands. Check out their website or speak to them directly about what they need. If their guidelines ask for something different, then that will overrule any standard conventions for the industry. In simple terms, make sure you give each individual prospect exactly what they expect to see. In almost every case, be sure to write your synopsis in the third person, using the present tense. This is regardless of which point of view or tense the book itself is written in. Also, put the first occurrence of each character's name in all caps so they can be easily picked out as the reader skims the page. Moving on to the meat of the content, you'll need to boil the beginning of your book into just a couple of sentences. In the actual novel, you have pages and pages to introduce characters, settings, and conflict. But for your synopsis, you're going to have to pick out what's essential and present the bare facts. Don't go for an atmospheric vagueness here. Stick to a concrete foundation as much as possible. A core point to keep in mind when writing your synopsis is that you've reached a pure business stage of the communication between publisher and writer. The publisher or agent you're negotiating with has probably already read your sample and enjoyed your style. Now they just want to know how the rest of the story goes. This means your synopsis is simply a functional outlay of your story's plot. It isn't the blurb on the back of your book, and it isn't meant to act as an end-user sales piece. Teasing all your twists and turns and speaking directly to the reader aren't techniques that fit well here, so stick to a direct and professional method of revealing your story's structure, leaving out any details or subplots that aren't essential to the main narrative. Focus more on chapters rather than individual scenes. Remember, this is a concise breakdown, usually no longer than eight 
800 words or so. So always keep in mind that you're providing an overview rather than a blow-by-blow -blow account. When you first start out, constructing a synopsis will feel like a clunky and awkward process, but once you've managed to nail it down, it's time to bring it all together and make it sing. Do this by reading through and looking out for unintended plot holes and missing information. These plot holes may not exist within the novel itself, but when you've worked hard to condense everything for a synopsis, it can sometimes seem as though they do. Make sure to fill those gaps or you risk your prospective publisher assuming that your story is indeed filled with plot holes that they're going to have to put additional resources into fixing. After that, think about whether the sentences flow logically. Make sure they don't jump around too much within the story framework. If you do need to jump elsewhere, a good way to make it feel fluid is to make sure the start of each sentence ties back to the previous one, using words like while, meanwhile, because, or then to help link them together. Next, read through your synopsis once more with your eye on character arcs and make sure you've included your protagonist's journey from the person they were at the beginning to who they become at the end. This is where you're most likely to realize you've accidentally created a plot hole by omission, so it's totally worth your time. Show off your protagonist's key goals and actions and your villain's most impactful counteractions, looking for defining moments in your character's journeys and highlight how they change the course of the narrative. Rereading is immensely important no matter how bored you might get with it. So when you're sure your story's logic and character arcs are shining through, read your synopsis again with an eye on clarity, flow, and rhythm. At this point, you're just about done. Now just trim as many words as you can. Use descriptive phrases sparingly and choose words that carry a lot of weight instead of packing your synopsis with fluffy filler. Remember, there's no room for waffle. In the end, you're likely to have roughly a page to a page and a half of synopsis, a hard-won distillation of your entire novel, ready to hit the desk of an agent or publisher with a professional no-nonsense impact. So go get them, and make sure to like and share this video if you found these tips useful. Subscribe for more great Autocrit content, and check out www.autocrit.com to see how your next novel could be the best you've ever written. <laughs> see you soon.